Hello. And welcome to another edition of Julia Herdman History. If you're new to the channel, I hope you find what you're looking for. Here, my aim is to bring to light the stories of women and men who have been forgotten by mainstream history. So, let's begin. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to recount the poignant tale of a princess whose life was marred by an arranged and loveless marriage that led to her imprisonment for a staggering 33 years. Sophia Dorothea's life took a significant turn when, at the age of 10, she became the heir to her father's kingdom, the Principality of Lüneburg in Lower Saxony. Like her mother, Princess Sophia Dorothea possessed great beauty and vivacity. Sophie Dorothea grew up in carefree circumstances. Her parents were more an exception than the rule for married couples of their status. They were bound to each other in sincere love. And they gave their only child, who was a bright and talented girl, warmth and affection. As she matured, her father transferred large assets to her making her an attractive prospect in the marriage market. At just 16, she found herself wed to her cousin, George Louis of Hanover, the future king of Great Britain and Ireland. When she first heard of this match, Princess Sophia Dorothea exclaimed, I will not marry the pig snout. Her 22-year-old husband, George Louis, was equally disinterested. He already had a mistress and was content with his life as a soldier. Nevertheless, and against her wishes, Princess Sophie Dorothea married her cousin, the eldest son of the Duke, and later elector, Ernst August of Braunschweig Lüneburg, on November 18, 1682, in the chapel at Sell Castle. Her mother in law, Princess Sophie of the Palatinate, always viewed her new daughter-in-law as an unequal bastard, and often referred to her as the mouse dirt in the pepper, in exchange for his willingness to marry the inferior Sophia Dorothea. George Louis received a substantial dowry, and the promise of inheriting his father-in-law's kingdom upon his death. Princess Sophia Dorothea, on the other hand, got nothing, but a man who didn't like her and in-laws who thought she was beneath them. The wedding took place on the 21st of November 1682. The marriage was a disaster. George Louis treated his bride with callous coldness, and frequently scolded her for her lack of etiquette. Explaining her reluctant support for the marriage, Duchess Sophia wrote to her niece Elizabeth Charlotte, Duchess of Orleans. One hundred thousand thalers a year is a goodly sum to pocket. Without speaking of a pretty wife. Who will find a match in my son George Louis? the most pig-headed, stubborn boy who ever lived, who has round his brain such a thick crust. I defy any man or woman ever to discover what is in them. He does not care much for the match itself. But one hundred thousand thalers a year have tempted him as they would have tempted anybody else. The couple established their home in Liner Palace in Hanover. Here, Sophia Dorothea was closely watched by her unpleasant aunt, the Duchess Sophia and spied upon by her husband's agents during his absences on military campaigns. Yet, despite their shared unhappiness, the couple had two children. George Augustus, born in 1683, who would later become King George II of Great Britain, and a daughter born in 1686, when Sophia Dorothea was 20. Over time, George grew more distant from his wife. He spent his days with his dogs and horses, and his nights with his mistress, the married daughter of his father's mistress, a woman named Sophia Charlotte von Kielmanzegg, who was rumored to be her husband's half-sister. Feeling aggrieved, lonely, and miserable, Princess Sophia Dorothea found solace in the company of Swedish Count Philip Christoph von Konigsmark, a soldier in the Hanoverian army. Konigsmark was a year older than the princess, and a stark contrast to her unattractive and boorish husband. Konigsmark came from an old noble family from Brandenburg. Sophie Dorothea had known him since she was a child, as he had grown up as a page at her father's court. At the beginning of 1688, he came to Hanover, where he served as a colonel in the bodyguard of Duke Ernst August. As colonel of the bodyguard, he belonged to the inner circle of the ducal court. 
The contact between Konigsmark and Sophie Dorothea was initially loose and sporadic, and, to begin with, went unnoticed. This probably changed in 1691, when the people watching her began to notice the Count's careless favoritism towards her. By 1694 the whole Hanoverian court knew they were in love, and enjoying a physical relationship. When George confronted his wife in a heated argument, she packed her bags and went to her parents in cell. Her parents, however, did not approve of their daughter's behavior and moreover, her father was obliged to George for his support in his war against Denmark and Sweden. So, her parents sent Sophia back to Hanover. Where, unabashed, she plotted her escape with Konigsmark and her lady-in-waiting. The lovers' escape plans were revealed by Countess Clara Elizabeth von Platten, a former mistress of Elector Ernst August. She had tried to persuade Count Konigsmark to marry her illegitimate daughter Sophia Charlotte, but he had refused. Offended, she then revealed at court the Count's love affair with Sophie Dorothea and their planned escape. The Countess of Platten told George how Konigsmark and Princess Sophia Dorothea had embarked on a love affair. Filled with secret meetings and passionate correspondence conveyed through a trusted intermediary. And proved it by showing him a collection of their correspondence. Konigsmark was immediately banished from the Hanoverian court. But soon found a position in the neighboring court of Saxony. With his affair now likely to become public knowledge Konigsmark gave his love letters from Sophia to his brother-in-law, the Swedish Count Carl Gustav von Lohenhaupt for safekeeping. However, one fateful night, while intoxicated, he let his guard slip and revealed the scandalous details of his affair with Princess Sophia. It did not take George's spies long to send the news back to Hanover. And on the morning of July 2, 1694, after a meeting with Sophia at Lina Palace, Konigsmark was arrested and taken away. Sophie Dorothea would never know what had happened to her lover even though his disappearance became a state affair. Konigsmark's relatives sent diplomats to ask questions. King Louis XIV asked his sister-in-law Lieselot of the Palatinate for details, but she pretended to be clueless. The French king then sent agents to Hanover, but they were no more able to shed light on the mystery than anyone else. George demanded a divorce, citing his wife as the party at fault. Sophie Dorothea was initially hauled off to Alden Castle. Then moved to Lanau where the divorce trial took place. The marriage was dissolved on December 28, in 1694. Sophie Dorothea was declared solely responsible for the malicious abandonment of her husband. She was forbidden from marrying again or from seeing her children. Her name was removed from all official documents. She was no longer mentioned in prayers. And she was stripped of the title of Elector Princess. After the verdict, she was taken back to the remote Alden Castle in the Lunaburg Heath, which served as her prison. For 33 years. George confiscated the assets she had brought into the marriage. And then imposed an annual maintenance payment on her. A guard of 40 men watched her around the clock. All of the princess's contacts and her mail were strictly controlled. She was only allowed visits from her mother who was granted unlimited visitation rights and two ladies-in-waiting chosen for their loyalty to Hanover. When her mother died in 1722, Sophia was left surrounded by enemies. She never gave up hope of being free and seeing her children again. Her parents too probably secretly believed until the end that their daughter would one day be released from prison. In any case, in January 1705, shortly before her father's death, her parents drew up a joint will, according to which, she was to receive the Arlden, Retham and Walsrode estates, extensive holdings in France and Selle, her father's large fortune, and her mother's legendary jewellery collection. Her father appointed Count Heinrich Sigismund von Barr as administrator of Sophie Dorothea's assets. He was twelve years older than the princess. A handsome, highly educated and sensitive gentleman for whom Sophie Dorothea developed a deep affection. Their esteem was mutual. And her affection did not go unreturned. She gave him generous tributes in her will, but he died five years before her leaving her to manage her own finances. Which she did with great joy and sound business sense. In the end, her only comfort was eating. 
Her defenses weakened, and the lack of exercise caused her to gain weight. At the beginning of 1726, she suffered a stroke, and in August of the same year she took to her bed with what was described as severe colic, and never left it. She refused medical attention and refused to eat. Within a few weeks, she was dead. The autopsy carried out before her burial revealed she was suffering from a pathological liver and bile obstruction due to 60 gallstones. George expressly forbade any expression of mourning for her in Hanover, and was furious to find out that their daughter had disobeyed him and had led the court in mourning her mother in Berlin. As if 33 years of lonely imprisonment was not enough, her funeral was turned into a farce. George had given no instructions so her body was placed in a lead coffin and deposited in the basement of the castle. When the orders finally came from London in January 1727, the coffin could not be buried due to weeks of heavy rain. So the coffin went back into the cellar and was filled with sand. It was not until May that year that the princess was finally laid to rest. She was secretly buried, in the dead of night, in the crypt of the town church of Street Marion, in Cell. No one was there to say a prayer or goodbye. And so Princess Sophia and her lover, Swedish Count, Philip Christoph von Konigsmark slipped silently into obscurity and exited the pages of history. That is until August 2016. When a renovation project at Liner Palace in Hanover revealed, a human skeleton believed to be that of Swedish Count Philip Christoph von Konigsmark, who had disappeared in 1694. Sophia's children had always suspected the Countess of Platten and their father of von Konigsmark's murder. But they could never prove it. The Countess was exonerated from any involvement in von Konigsmark's death by the deathbed confessions of two of her henchmen so on whose orders von Konigsmark met his death remains one of history's mysteries. The bones and tissue that were found have been examined by physicians, but the cause of death could not be determined. However, the DNA from the bones can now be compared to DNA of living relatives of Philip Konigsmark. So, when we get the results, a 300-year-old murder mystery may finally be solved. Well, that's it for today folks. A huge, heartfelt thank you for joining me and for your incredible attention. Your support means the world to me. If you found value in today's content, please do me a favor, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to press the alarm bell so you won't miss any of the exciting new videos coming your way soon. Your engagement helps us grow and create an amazing community right here. And your feedback is always warmly welcomed and appreciated. Once again, thank you for spending your valuable time with me. I'm truly grateful for each and every one of you. So, until next time, take care, stay inspired, and remember, incredible things are on the horizon, and I can't wait to share them with you. Goodbye for now, and see you in the next video.